Welcome to the Growing Food and Feeding People podcast. Whether you're a backyard gardener, a market gardener, or a small-scale farmer just starting out or a seasoned grower, this show is for you. Join us as we share tips and tricks, tactics and hacks to growing food for yourself, your family, and your community, as well as sharing stories here from the field and other growers and farmers making a difference in their local food webs. My name is Cody, and I will be your host, so let's get growing. All right, episode five, season one of the Growing Food and Feeding People podcast. I cannot believe we've made it to episode five already, but this show is produced by Simply and Easy Media, and this episode is brought to you by Simplistic Farms, providing fresh local produce to West Michigan, one family at a time. All right, guys, now the main topic of today's podcast is going to be tired and worn out, overwhelmed and burnout, balancing the farm and your sanity. <laughs> so speaking of keeping your sanity, Say, what do you get if you divide the circumference of a pumpkin by its diameter? Pumpkin pie. (laughs) That time of year. So let's jump right into the segment we like to call This Week on the Farm. And we are going to lead with that. We're going to lead with a little story from the week. It's really why I do this, you know. So this week, um, if you've been following along on our YouTube channel, you'll know that we had a volunteer pop up in the garden this year. In the market garden and we let it go and i let it go because it was a pumpkin plant i didn't plant any pumpkins this year but when that one popped up i decided to let it go now that pumpkin plant has now stretched about 40 feet down one of my 50 foot beds it's taken up pretty much a whole bed which is awesome uh it's produced about a half dozen six or eight pretty doggone nice pumpkins and this week i got to have one of my best friends bring his daughters out and they got to pick the pumpkins they want for Halloween. They were going to do some carving this weekend. So, so that was pretty cool. There's, there's nothing like seeing the little ones go out and picking out their pumpkin for the year. They also got to munch on some fresh broccoli and some beans and got to pick some melons out of the melon tunnel. So that was pretty darn fun this week. Um, I definitely say that was probably the highlight of my week. So that was pretty awesome. And that was all due to the pumpkins that I didn't plant. <laughs> so volunteers in the garden aren't always a bad thing. Um, I've been trying to embrace them more and more. So anyway, uh, jumping into our harvest list for the week, man, we actually got a lot of rain this week, which really wasn't fantastic. I think we probably had enough. I know my tomatoes have definitely had enough. Probably about 80% of them split from too much water, and my lettuce really didn't like it as well. So a little bit too much rain this week. But you'll have that. It is fall here in Michigan. But we did still end up harvesting quite a few tomatoes, mostly cherry tomatoes at this point. Our large tomatoes are just about winding off, and so are the cherries, really. I think we probably got about one more week, and then I'll probably do a final harvest and and pull those plants, um, unless they prove otherwise. But that's what it looks like for now. But we did harvest some toms. We also harvested a bunch more green beans, uh, and I think pretty much the last of the 20-foot fence trellis Man, that thing produced great, but its leaves are starting to yellow, and it's it's dying off in perfect timing, really, because we were just able to pick our first beans off of the brand new 50-foot bed that we planted here at the end of the summer. So those are producing beans now, so we've wrapped up the 20-foot bed, still harvesting beans on a weekly basis. We did get to harvest some broccoli this week, as well as we harvested out probably about 90% of the celery that we grew. And we harvested some more green onions and carrots. We still have plenty of those to harvest yet for the season. We did harvest out the last of our watermelons. And we're making good use of those. As well as some some winter squash. And a ton of hot peppers and sweet peppers. I think I harvested almost a full bushel of hot peppers. And I know that my wife harvested a whole batch of sweet peppers um, to run through the dehydrator. So peppers 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 and there's still a ton of peppers still growing on the plants so we aren't done there even close um next week's harvest it looks like we're probably going to finish out the tomatoes like i said i'm sure we will harvest some more peppers we'll have ready um what we're also going to dig into getting the rest of our beets harvested as well as our potatoes i've got a full 50 foot bed and then half of a bed so another 25 feet of potatoes to dig up as well as I want to say two 50-foot rows of beets. Those will be on top of the list next week, as well as, I'm sure, some more carrots and green onions. I know there's more broccoli growing, and the cabbage is looking pretty good. So 
I think we'll probably finish out the winter squash next week as well. Uh, we also did a few more loads of firewood this week, of course, when it wasn't raining. I'm um, trying to get out there as, as much as possible, but we're starting to get a pretty good pile. And I was able to get out one time. It was actually my second sit for the bow season here in Michigan. And I had success on my second sit. It was a great sit. I called in a nice buck to about 10 yards. Oh, about a half hour before dark and was able to put a good, clean, ethical shot on him. Didn't go far at all. It was a quick, easy track. Shout out to neighbor Dan for giving me a hand there. And because it's still pretty warm here in Michigan, I went right processing him the next morning. Got a lot of meat in the freezer. Real happy to start the hunting season off that way. That was a true blessing and a nice break from the garden for sure. And that's pretty much how we spent this week on the farm. So now on to today's main topic. So are you feeling a little tired and worn out? Maybe a little overwhelmed, burnout? Well, that's all right. You're not alone. Uh, you know, pretty much all of us, after working our ass off all season long, putting in the long days, planting, planting, praying, weeding, harvesting, selling and canning, repeat, repeat, repeat for months on end, at this point in the season, I don't know too many of us who aren't a little bit tired, a little bit worn out, a little bit overwhelmed, maybe even burnt out. And it's normal because we exert so much of ourselves during the growing season, you know, making hay while the sun shines, sometimes literally, sometimes figuratively, that by this point, we just need a break. And at this time of the season, it may get a little tough on you, you know, put all this time in, in the garden. At this point, I don't know about yours. But my garden is not nearly as beautiful now as plants are dying off, leaves are yellowing, browning, all the crops are winding down and dying off. It just doesn't look as pretty. It's not as inviting to be out in that environment. But yet there's still a lot to do. You know, the harvests still continue, depending on what you have planted at least for a few weeks, if not longer. Crops that are done, you obviously have to clean out those beds and then make the decision, are you going to replant or are you just going to prep? The bed and put it away for winter you know it's, it's we're still low 70s high 60s here in michigan so i would i personally feel kind of silly to not still have some stuff growing while the weather's pretty good but that being said we could easily have our first frost a week from now i mean it's just you just never know uh once it gets this time of year odds are it's going to be a few weeks to a month or so out yet but it's definitely possible to have one now it wouldn't be the first time that we've gotten snow in October, that's for darn sure. So obviously those thoughts are weighing on our brain. You know, not to mention if you're selling, you know, your income opportunities are definitely winding down and dwindling away for the season anyway, if the income for the farm was derived off the vegetables that you grew during the summer. So that can also obviously get you thinking about how you did for the year, thinking about your goals that you may have missed or goals that you hit. But nonetheless, it can be a little bit overwhelming and at this point. You still are in the game. Kudos to you because I know not everybody is. People definitely tap out before mid October because it can be a ton of work and a little bit stressful during the heat of the season. So it is perfectly normal. You are not alone. And my suggestion, really, at this point, and it's something that I definitely do every single year, is take a break. You know, relax for a week or so. Just step away from the farm, go away for the weekend if possible. Just get away from it, forget about it, and let go of it completely for that time. Just don't even think about it. You know, do something you enjoy, a hobby, a trip, spending time with family, whatever it is, and focus on that for a moment. Focus on that for the entire time you're giving yourself to just step away and take a little break and just enjoy it. Because it is okay. It will still be there when you return. A week isn't going to kill anything. A week, a weekend, whatever it is. And just give yourself a little bit of time, give yourself permission to just take a break, revive, refresh, so you can get back in the game and finish strong. You got this. Yeah! All right, and you know what that sound means. It is time for our farm and garden word of the week. And this week's word is volunteer. So the question is, in gardening and agronomic terminology, a volunteer is A, Plant that grows on its own rather than being planted by a farmer or gardener. B, the only pumpkins that we grew this year. C, a miracle of nature. Or D, all of the above. That would be D, all of the above in my opinion. But yes, a volunteer is a plant that grows on its own 
you know, typically the seeds are brought in by the wind or by a bird or in a compost mix or from a previous crop that you had on that bed another season, season or two prior. And that's exactly what happened with my pumpkins. I planted pumpkins in that vicinity two years ago. So I didn't have any pumpkins in there last year, but the year before that I did. And then this year, that's what popped up pretty much in my pathway. And I let it go and it ended up being a pumpkin and produced better than any pumpkins I've ever grown. So that was amazing to me and a true blessing. So that is our word for the week. It is volunteer. Now, hopefully you have been inspired or entertained, learned something or laughed. Now, guys, I truly hope you're enjoying the podcast. And as always, I cannot thank you enough for tuning in and joining me every week. If you'd like to continue the conversation, we'd love to chat over on Facebook, and you can find us there at Simplistic Farms, LLC. Or you can comment over on YouTube at Simple and Easy Simplistic Farms. If you'd like to help support the show or get involved with hashtag Project Feed Your Neighbor, you can also find us over at Patreon.com at Patreon forward slash Simplistic Farms. We hope you have a great week. Make somebody smile. And we'll talk to you in the next one.